So let's get the man, the myth, the legend, let's get the man of the hour out here. We had to do some measuring. He just fits. So this, is, this will give you an idea. Let's get him out here and then I'll say, please welcome our uh, fabulous chef, Kevin Belt, a.k.a. Chef Bell. To give you an idea, I'm just about 6'3". Give you a little idea on some size here. People think I'm 5'4". I'm not. This is a... Mama just had good fur lines. But, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta start. We can start with a prayer. As we pray, Lord, Lord, Lord. We're playing the Lord. Heal our brothers and sisters that don't eat butter and heavy cream. Oh, yes. Can you feel the fat moving through the room? Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You skinny people be hailed. Be hailed. Skinny people come forward, I will touch you. <laughs> After the lawsuit, it's best you don't touch them. But... Wait, story. Wait, wait, true story. True story. Oh, God. True story. No, oh, no. I'm, I'm part of the morning crew, WWL TV. Yes, sir. We're doing a live location shot over in Covington at this arts festival. So I'm tossing to break, okay? And after break, I'm doing a segment on things for kids to do. So I go, not thinking, they come to me and they're like, touched on, I, and I said, so we've touched on art, we've touched on music, we've touched on food, when we come back, we're gonna touch on kids. <laughs> and that was his last day, so now he's here with us on the Big Easy Cruise. He was desperate for a job, which meant he was affordable, so we brought him out here to do that. I mean, I didn't even catch it, but I hear the, in, in, my, in my IFB, I hear the producer laughing, I'm looking at the rest of the crew, they're all laughing, and I'm like, what did it happen? I'm zipping out of something? Never got it. Never got it. Well, what are you going to do for us here today, this morning, Chef? Not a damn thing! All right. this damn here to talk! <laughs> what are your sous chefs going to do for no. us here today, then, Chef? I've been cooking all last week, I'm tired! I was telling somebody that last night, you know, every afternoon there's a tasting. Yep. 4 every, every, every tasting every day of everything. And you look at it, and you see, and you have to taste it, and you, you make a little adjustment. We get to dinner, and Tom and Anastasia, they're ordering, you know, and then the waiter comes and says, bring me a cup of coffee, please, and just keep it full. And I had bread, butter, and coffee last night. <laughs> you look thinner today. You look... No, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you look trim. Yes, you this look evening trim. I'll be in the deck in my Speedo. These were the right way forward this time. <laughs> Looked like he was smuggling grapes last time. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. <laughs> I'm going to leave because we're going to do this all day. Chef Kevin Milton, my friend. Chef Kevin Milton. You know what? I got to say, that young man does not know how good he is. Exactly. And look, wait, wait, wait. First off, in the back, look, look at the chefs in the back, back there. I, I have to say, thank you. Peter, Pablo, you know, and, and their crew, they're absolutely fantastic. And I think, I think, is that Noel back there too? Yeah, Noel is back there. I think May is back there somewhere. I, I, it, it's incredible. Um, you know, when 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 we hit the river, it was like, whoo, you know, the water color changed. Yes. You know, I was seeing all that blue water didn't turn brown. Now I'm home. You know? <laughs> But did you notice out of the window, if you ever fly in New Orleans, and, and for the first time flying in New Orleans, every, it freaks everybody out. Because if you notice, as we first came in the channel, you see little spots of land, and there's marsh, and there's water and all. That is South Louisiana. We are nothing but swamps and marsh. Our cooking was developed from swamps and marsh. So you hear Cajun and Creole. Creole comes from a Portuguese word, Creolio. Firstborn new colony of foreign parents. Take a group of folks, drop them on an island, firstborn true Creoles. Each generation after that is a Creole descendant. Okay? So there's Creoles all over, but we just kept ours. All right? <laughs> Sauces came with the French, Picante, the Spanish. The Indian, the American Indian showed how to use all the herbs and spices that were growing well at the time. The African showed how to cook it on a loaf, fry, which allowed the flavors to blend together. But now let's bring in 36 different nationalities. So there's Irish, Italian, German, Hungarian, Yugoslavian. Everybody came in. 
everybody added to the pot when he knew it home from mother and grandmother. That's why. How many of you guys have recipes? Yeah. All right. See those recipes? <laughs> you know, if something you don't like, don't put it in. If you like it, that means more. All right. The Acadians started in France on the east coast of Canada, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. The area was called Acadie. That's why they were called Acadians. The word Acadian was just shortened down Acadian. So imagine country cooking and city cooking, that's what's merged to become traditional Louisiana cuisine. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right, the history's over. That's it. <laughs> so, jambalaya. Jambon was a French word for ham. Laya was the African word for rice. Have you all ever had paella? Yeah. Jambalaya and paella are related. Okay? The rice actually cooks down in the pot. This particular recipe that you have, and you know, jambalaya can be done with so many different things. It, 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 whether you eat meat, whether you don't eat meat, whether you want meat, whether you have it in the refrigerator, you know, spam. <laughs> Some of us grew up in the age where when you pop that can, now they pop the can. But you remember when you went to have the, the key? And what happened? The key would break. Then that's when you had to go to the garage. And that's when you first learned what pliers were. Go get the pliers. And you, like and you open that can with pliers. And you know why Spam has that little gel coating? You know how it has that gel coating? But it's only on one side by the top? You know why? Huh? The fat? Preservative? No, 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 no. It's so the oil, dirt from the pliers don't get on the span. And then you slice it real thin. Then you throw it in a skillet and fry it crispy. And then you put it on. So. Why not make spambalaya? <laughs> All right? Why not? Most of, you know, some of you guys have seen me run around in these t-shirts that say bacon is meat and stuff like that. My wife, I, I'll say all kind of, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I, if you ask me today what I'm going to talk about, I can't tell you what I'm going to talk about. So my wife hears me say crazy things, and then she puts it on a t-shirt. All right? <laughs> so, look, we're going to throw some bacon down in here. All right? Anybody not eat bacon? I'm sorry, you gotta leave. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just I'm but, that, but that's the great thing about Louisiana cooking. You cannot mess it up. So, for those of you that don't eat bacon, guess what? Don't start with the bacon. Huh? Huh? No, but I know you went. But you know why people put it in? Because it's on that damn recipe. <laughs> A buddy of mine, hey, I tried this new recipe. It's like, okay, how'd it come out? Well, it was good, except for such and such. I'm like, well, 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 why'd you put it in? Well, it was in the recipe. But you don't like it. Well, yeah, but it was in the recipe. <laughs> Recipes have to be written for someone who has never seen a stove. <laughs> All right? So, I'm serious. When you write a recipe, you have to write it for someone who has never seen a stove. Where it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Read that recipe, because a lot of times you can go from A to C to G. All right? So, onions, we're going to throw some onions in here. I, I, I notice, no, notice how low this table is. <laughs> I'm walking through the quarter one day, and this lady comes up to me, she says, oh my God, you're huge. And I'm like, I'm sorry? She's like, I watch you in Wisconsin, and you look so normal. <laughs> well, most cooking sets, it's just like this, from boom to no. My set that you guys watch at PBS, let's reverse this. So instead of being here to here, it's here to there. All right? The counter is up to here. My counter is about, yeah, about right where this pot is. All right? That's my counter. Everything is bigger to make me look normal size. <laughs> so, so it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Gang, this is a chef's knife. All right. 
we don't hold a handle. It has a heel because you want to hold it by the blade. You want to grab that blade and make it an extension of your hand. I never thought we'd do knife lessons long, long. All right? But look, all we're going to do is we cut off the top, cut off the bottom. Look, pop that baby in half. All right? Speed comes with time. Speed comes with time. Now, you notice, hey, just leave a little finger. Don't cut all the way through. Leave one in attached. I don't, I'm talking about not, not, not your hand. I'm talking about leave one in attached down here, all right? And then it's just a, I'll show you with the celery. The celery I can show you a lot better, all right? Because it's just a, you notice a knife never leaves a cutting board? It's just an up and down rocking motion, you know? It's a, you know, you can practice this with a spoon. This is a little slippery. This is a brand new knife. And you know what I should have done? I should have cut myself with it. It's a wives tale. You buy a new car, you scratch it. You know? You get a new knife, you nick yourself, and let the blade taste you. So that way it doesn't taste you any other time. I'm sorry. It's your wish. These are available on Amazon. <laughs> this is called a cut glove. If you're afraid you're going to lose a finger, buy a cut glove. Twelve ninety five. Alright. Huh? Where did I find in my back pocket? <laughs> no, they come different so They come from petite all the way up. Alright? But yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get to cooking here eventually. I, I need your help. Look, celery. You ever wonder why you split celery all the way down? Top is wider than the bottom, so it cooks evenly. Oh, that's why it's done. Guys, this is nice. Say hello. Have any of y'all eaten the pinnacle yet? Yes. 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 Go ahead, tell them what you do. Go ahead, tell them what you do. I'm going to leave. You're going to have to take over. <laughs> no? You know I don't want to take over? Come on. If I say pretty please. If I say pretty, pretty please. No? Here, swipe the hand. Just, just jump the hand. Thank you. There we go. Onion, celery, green pepper, the trinity. South Louisiana, we had no sandy soil for carrots to grow. So instead of growing carrots, we grew green peppers. All right? South Louisiana is predominantly Catholic. Onion, celery, green pepper got the nickname of the Trinity. All right? But guess what? If you don't like bell peppers, only make it with onion and celery. If you don't like celery, only make it with onion and bell pepper. If you don't have onions, guess what? What do we do? Don't make it. That's right. <laughs> you know? But because we were swamps and marsh, Louisianians, we don't grab the car keys to run to the store. That's why it always tastes different every time you make it. Because it's like, my mom, I, I grew up in one of these old houses. My mom would go to the refrigerator, open the door. She'd go to the other side of the kitchen, open the pantry. And on the stove would be some onion, sour, green pepper she's got started. And I say, Mom, what's for dinner? She's like, oh, don't know yet. <laughs> but that's, and every day was a little bit different. This is my trick with the bell peppers. Everybody cuts bell peppers different. I like to turn them upside down. Just go straight down. Then now you can see where the seeds are. Yep. <laughs> My work here is done. No, it's 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 just easier. How big do you want to cut your Trinity? It depends. You know, a lot of times people cut it up so fine you never see it. It's totally up to you how you want to do this. Now, I've been running my mouth. Anybody has questions, just holler. <laughs> oh, the question was, 
I don't take the ribs out of the peppers, okay? If I'm cooking for myself, yes. Greedy relatives coming over. <laughs> No. <laughs> See, there's things you do for you, and there's things you do for yourself. All right? Do you take the ribs out? Yeah. Oh, good. All right? Useless information for you. Jalapeno peppers. Any type of hot pepper, the oil in the pepper is along where the seeds attach. And it's not so much about taking the seeds out. But it's that meaty area where the seeds attach. That's where all the oil is. That's where the heat comes from. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, now I'm up here running my mouth doing all of this, and that is the onions and celery over there. Guess what they're doing? They're giving us liquid. So when you're looking for that flavor of Louisiana cooking, it doesn't come out of a container or a shaking container. It's the moisture that comes out of these vegetables. And that's why it's so important to Louisiana cooking. You may not see it there, but the moisture is coming out of that onion, that celery, and that green pepper. That boat was in there. Might as well use it, huh? How we doing? We good? All right. What else are we going to put in here? Sausage? Okay. We have a little smoked sausage. We can put some of that in. We have a little Andouille sausage. Now, now, I'm going to tell you, andouille is a little different. Andouille in Louisiana is a coarsely chopped ham made into a sausage and smoked, okay? Every andouille is a little bit different, all right? So the andouille you all are having in the boat tonight is, is a little different than the andouille we typically get in Louisiana. But guess what? It's still good. It works. Here's, Do you have any favorite brands? Do you have any favorite brands? Yep. One in the fridge. <laughs> the one on sale, the one they give me. You got it with me? Do you have a favorite brand? Let me ask you a question. Do you drink? All right. Do you? His wife does. Okay. Wine, beer. Is it the same one you serve your company? Well, I Come on, tell the truth. You're selfish about it. Damn right, we should be. Damn right. Company coming over. Get the one on sale. They don't like it, they can eat it at home. You know, and that's one of the worst things we do. The worst, all of us, all of us. Who doesn't cook? Who, who doesn't cook? All right, all right, come on, come on. Have you ever eaten a bag of chips? Yes. Did you open it? Yes. That's cooking. <laughs> That's cooking. <laughs> cereal. Have you eaten cereal? Out of the box, into the bowl? Yes. Cooking. <laughs> cooking is preparing food to eat. And we know, all of us, all of us have we have that dish we feed our family at least once a week. We know it's good. We know it's good. We feed it to them once a week. But what happens? Company's coming. We grab a book. And we go to a page that has not seen the light of day since the book was printed. And we go, that's what I'm going to make. You have no clue how it's supposed to come out. All right? So when company comes over, they don't eat with us every day. Fix the thing that you know is good. Because the next time they come over, they're like, oh, I have never had such good peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> do you think you can make that again? And no matter what it is, all you got to do, and that, that's when you have them. When they say, can you make it again? You've got them. Delay. Yeah, I think I have everything at home. I can, I, I, I can do it. Oh, no, no, there's any trouble. No, no, I can do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Filet mignon for you. 
Yes. <laughs> Hamburger Helper for them. <laughs> Do I decase my own Dewey? Isn't that personal? <laughs> I mean, I already pulled the glove out. <laughs> Boy, there are so many ways I can go there. <laughs> okay. Um, there's someone on Dewey that's really big. Here. She was here. We were just talking to Sarah Girl. Is Tracy still here? Put it on a t shirt. Put it on a t shirt. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you want K Shore on doing? Yeah. So, you text my thank you. Something like this, the casing is really fine, but there's an on Dewey that's about twice his size. Okay? And that one may want to just take a knife and score it and take that casing off because that casing for that larger sausage is going to be really, really thick and chewy if you try to eat it. But most of the on you find it will be this size where the casing is very thin and you don't have to worry about decasing it. Let me ask you this. Do you, would you rather it decased or? Well, okay. The on you get is is, is smoke and it tends to be a bit chewy. So, of course, you decase it. But if you cook it for relatives, leave that damn casing on. Because it slows them down from eating so much. Y'all kind of get the theme of this, huh? You kind of get the theme of this? You know? That's why I don't cook at home. You know, I almost got really stupid and put in like an eight burner stove and all that. No! Then I realized company would be coming over. No, you don't need to come over. You know? Everybody always tells Monica, Oh, it must be someone to go down to a chef. And she's like, he does not cook at home. You know? But she started working again at the university. And so she went back to university. I would make dinner for her, you know, she said, Hey, I'm on the way home. I said, You hungry? Yeah, baby, I'm hungry. And I'd have a plate waiting for her when she got home. And then she's like, Oh god, this is gorgeous. And then I was sitting there eating, and she's like, what are you eating? Cereal. <laughs> you know, hot dogs. All right. Look, this is just a little ham that happened to be here. So guess what? We're going to put it in. Tasso. Have you guys heard of Tasso? Tasso is the most seasoned piece of meat in Louisiana cooking. It's a small piece of meat that's really, really, it's a piece of ham that's really, really seasoned. And you want to take it, dice it up really fine. It's not going to be your main meat in the dish, but it's used in omelets. It's used in pasta dishes and things like that. All right? That's what tasso is. So you can throw a little tasso into this. Of course, we had onion, celery, green pepper. All right? Garlic. Yeah. You know, this is the trinity. Garlic is the pope. You can't cook without garlic. All right? Scrape it. We strip it on doing. Scrape that bow. Scrape that bow. Um, Browning what? Uh, we can. If you want, just be careful. Don't brown it too much because what's going to happen? It's going to get crunchy. It's going to get crunchy and bitter. Garlic, chopped, crushed, or sliced. Chopping or crushing it is it a bite. If you want a delicate flavor, slice it. Because when you slice it, it doesn't release much enzymes. Okay? So, yeah, if you want a stronger flavor, chop it or crush it. Slice it if you want a nice, delicate flavor. But be careful if you put it just in a little pan with a little butter or oil that you don't cook it too hard because then it'll get crunchy on you. Yes? What if relatives are coming over? No, don't even put garlic in it. 
Save the time. Save the time. No. You know? But, you know, always just, just yeah, you know, if you want to be nice, go ahead. You know, if they're good relatives, if they're the nice relatives. But, you know, we have some relatives that only show up to eat. Y'all know the ones. Yeah. And they show up with Ziplocs. Yeah. <laughs> and Tupperware. And Tupperware. Yes. Yes. Huh? I don't have no leftovers. And you have no leftovers. And you know I can't cook. But I, we talked about that. But here's what you do. You got to keep something. You gotta keep something left over and put that in that Tupperware. Oh. Let them take that home. They think they picked up the wrong thing. <laughs> I know not if I invite y'all over, y'all are not coming over. <laughs> They're like, oh no, no, I ain't gonna chef said we can come over. Oh, that's no baby, we not coming over. We we not gonna come. Oh, we got more smoked sausage. Yes. Good, huh? Yes, this is the smoke. We had a little on do we? We can do a little smoke. And you know, i tell you something. If you do it different sausages, something you can do is cut it a little different. The other one we cut in rounds, we can take this one and half moon it. Yes, you know, this is like a kielbasa. Uh, in the stores at home, you might have uh, Eckridge, Smoky Hollow Hillshire Farms, you know. anything firm. You don't want a fresh sausage that cooks apart. So anything nice and firm. Because if you use a sausage that cooks apart, people are like, what's that stuff? Sausage? And they're like, what? No, 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 stuff in there. No. Any fake sausage good for this when you're dealing with vegetarians? Any what? Fake sausage that you would recommend if you're cooking for vegetarians? Any for vegetarians? Yeah, a fake you, you know what? I don't call it fake. You know what I love to use? In my freezer at home, I keep the Morning Star breakfast patties. I'll cut those up and I clean black bean burgers. You know the black <laughs> the black bean burgers. I'll cut those up sometimes and use those. But I also keep, um, you know, the Impossible burgers. And and now those I find when you're sauteing those, those will fall apart on you. So if you're putting them in something where you want them to hold together. You might have to cook it first and then kind of cut it. But if you don't mind, I mean, but, but that Morningstar breakfast patty will get that flavor down in there as well. So sure, yeah. And, and I don't know if you've ever tried the black bean burgers. Cut those up and put those in things. Yeah, so you can do that. Matter of fact, today, if I'm thinking correct, upstairs there is going to be a vegetarian jambalaya on the Lido deck. Yeah, yeah. Just because something is vegetarian doesn't mean it doesn't taste good, you know? It's, um, I, I've become the resident um, culinary ambassador at Tulane University. And in the commons where the students eat, it's an entire nut-free building. The, huh? <laughs> Except for the students. Yeah, the wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. Do, do, do. They're, thank you. They're, but they're, they, they're, they're wonderful kids. They're really nice kids. Upstairs, there's two levels. We have an area upstairs called Simplified, where it's no gluten, no dairy, and it's all vegetarian. There is a room where you have a key card if you have allergies where you can go in and get whatever you want and come out, but you can't bring anybody in with you. You can sit in there and eat, but you can get your stuff because it's all dairy-free and it's all gluten-free, this one particular room where they can go in and get whatever they want and bring it out. So it's different from when I was in college. You know, well, I didn't go to college. I went to LSU. But, you know, there's no one. Come on, y'all know. Y'all know. Don't be jealous because y'all paid all that money and I got to go to high school twice. All right? So. All right. Here's what we got. Jambalaya. This is some of my seasoning, my Creole seasoning. Jambalaya, because our rice is going to cook in this pot, has to be over-seasoned a little bit. 
when, when if you season something and you go, ooh, it's perfect, it's fine if it's going to be a soup. But because our rice is going to cook in here, it absorbs a lot of flavor. And there are some places that you go to, they saute everything, they take cooked rice and mix the two together. That's a fake jambalaya. Jumbo, true jambalaya, the rice actually cooks in the pot. So here we have our rice. And I like to use a parboiled rice for the jambalaya. Okay? Um, don't use a flavored rice because you want your rice to cook in the flavor in the pot. But this is just a parboiled rice. But the most important thing you can do with any cooking, change your cooking 100%, never cook with water. Water dilutes. You said your favorite drink was uh, that Pinot Gris. No, Pinot Noir. Noir. She said it was Noir, 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 Noir. Merrick, Merrick. Noir, 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 Noir. No. Imagine you get halfway down a glass of Pinot Noir, and and I put water in it. What's going to happen? It dilutes it. But if I put more Pinot Noir. <laughs> or if I put a Chablis, or uh, 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 huh? a Cabernet, Cabernet. Uh, or some Ripple, Blue <laughs> uh, <laughs> Star, uh, Thunderbird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now we're going back to college days. Yeah, yeah. Apple Blue Star. So you see, all right, it's on right now, but if I take this pot off, it, it shuts off. You hear that beep? Yeah. It shuts off, and it'll automatically shut itself completely down. So that way, it won't burn the house down. All right, let me turn you off. Okay, all right. Never cook with plain water. Always, oh, ooh, action shot. <laughs> Grab the spoon. Look, 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 smile, smile. Come on, back to back, back to back, back to back. No, no, turn around, turn around, back to back, back to back. Here, cross your arms. Look, look, look at the camera. All right, now we go this way. Come on, come on, like this. Serious. <laughs> Not smile. Huh? Oh, get the knife. He wants the knife. Yeah. Put the Yeah. Oh, badass. Look at this. 
The reason why I had to wait to do the demo today, look at that. See that? You know what that is? River water. <laughs> That's why we had to wait till we hit the river to do this. Never put my plain water, always use good flavor liquid. Jambalaya has no color, it'll be plain color. So chicken and sausage jambalaya is normally brown in color. Have you guys heard of kitchen bouquet or gravy master gravy browning? Yeah. That was stock with a little gravy browning in it. All right? Uh, red jambalaya, don't put tomatoes in it because the acidic tomatoes and the rice get sticky and gummy. So you can use paprika, half stock, half Bloody Mary mix. Yeah. 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 And then right before serving, dice some tomatoes. So now it's coming to a boil. We're going to get the rice in. We need to stir it. We're going to bring this back to a boil. Cover it medium heat for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, shut it off. Okay? Give it a good stir. All right? And let it sit. It'll finish cooking just from eating the pan. With the lid on? Yeah. But you got to take the lid off to stir it. <laughs> I can clarify because you know she... <laughs> that pita noir. That pita noir is kicking in. I have to stir my pot. <laughs> there we go. It's stirred. Seafood. 
Seafood in jambalaya, if you put your shrimp in now or any seafood in now, it's going to get overcooked. So you remember how we talked about we're going to bring it to a boil, add the rice, back to a boil, medium heat for 10 minutes? When you shut it off and you stir it, you can put your cooked shrimp right on top. Cook, have them cooked already, put them right on top, because, and put the lid back on. Because while the rice finishes cooking, now that steam will reheat the shrimp. And when you get ready, all you got to do is fold them in and serve. You don't want to put your shrimp in raw because we have no control over how much liquid comes out of that shrimp. So you have the right amount of liquid, now you add raw shrimp in, and now all of a sudden it's watery. Does that kind of make sense? So have your seafood already cooked. That way it won't get overcooked. All right? Any other questions? Frenchie, how are we doing, brother? Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. Y'all, th this man here, I, I want to tell y'all, this is, I know this is the first cruise, but this is really, 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 really unique, and I really hope this catches on, because all of us from New Orleans, Jazz Fest is so huge. It's hot. Everything is spread out. But... Huh? And muddy. and muddy. Especially if it rains. You know it's going to rain. But, you know, all of us from New Orleans, we're loving it because we get to hang out with each other and sit and visit. This man, you will see from Super Bowls on the side, painting, different concerts, painting, different race events. I don't know how you do those. Though. I don't know how you do the racing because that has to be, you know, you know, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I made pit crew. Oh, you paint the pit crew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're standing around drinking. You know? How they sorry about that? They're standing around drinking. You know? And then, and then, you notice, my dad taught me the love of racing, like NASCAR. Because everybody thinks, well, they're just going in a circle. No, no. You got to tweak that car to get it running best. For those last 10 laps, you know, it's the whole race is about tweaking that engine, getting the right tire pressure right, just to do, yeah, uh, so, yeah, uh-huh. But, you know, NASCAR, you know, the guys are sweating it out. You watch Formula One, you know, <laughs> Formula One, you're in there. <laughs> and, and, and there's an alarm going off, there's an alarm going off. The, uh, the, uh, there needs air in the right rear tire. And they walk over to the board and they're like, oh. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice. I was stupid. I played football. Running. We had maybe 20 seconds to try to recover. You watch cricket? <laughs> If you with somebody good on the team, he is batting for two days. <laughs> two days he is batting. And the rest of the team is up in the box. <laughs> I played the wrong sport. Look, this is our rice that starts to cook. I think it has what you think. It's like it's on the cook. They can't see in here anyway. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, private? This is private? <laughs> no, baby, come look. You can come. You can come look. You can come look. Come in. Take a peek in. Do this? Now, now wait, 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 wait. Look, look, look here. Oh, that's it. Okay. You guys watching this, you're not here. All right? You're not here. Look, look around. Everybody else made it. Everybody else made it. Everybody else made it. All right? You sitting at home watching this because you cheat. <laughs> what can you smell? You can't smell a dog all day sitting there. Okay? You can't hear no music sitting there. So stop being so cheap and join the rest of us. Good. All the rest of us are here. Everybody else made it. at home with your peanut and wow. <laughs> All right. We could shut that off and just that'll, that'll finish good. 
Quite, do you all have questions on anything? Yes, sir. I've never parboiled rice before. Parboiled rice, picture huge vats of boiling water. The rice hits it for about 30 seconds. It doesn't cook it, but it, 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 when you do cook it, it cooks evenly and it fluffs a little better. No. Uh, <laughs> minute rice. You know? Look, look, look. We're not going to discuss sex, all right? This is about cooking. Uh, no. No. Here's, here, here's the thing. Here's what minute rice is. If you, if you ever see minute rice or instant rice, I want you to look at it really close. And, and you notice, you all of a sudden you might see a little piece of a dotted line. They take rice and they overcook it. Then they lay it out and they have rollers come over and roll it out. And then they dehydrate it in this thin sheet. And once it's dehydrated, a cutter comes over it and cuts it. So that's why you might see a little bit of perforated line. So it, that's why with minute rice, you hit it in water, boom, it's, it's cooked because it's rice that's already cooked, all right? So for something like this, you don't want minute rice, all right? I like the pole bar rice because it cooks a little more evenly, but if you don't have a pole bar rice, you can use the long grain rice. We grow tons of rice in South Louisiana, tons of rice. We have some wonderful rice growers in Louisiana, and, and, and the rice that's grown in Louisiana, long grain, medium grain, short grain. The shorter the grain is starchy, the rice. <coughs> so for a dish like this, you want a long grain rice because you want the dish more grain for grain. Have you guys had the boudin? Yeah. All right. When, when, when we make the boudin on board, for the boudin, yeah, I need cooked rice. So what I've been using for the boudin, I've been using broken rice. So I either I'll use a short grain rice for the boudin, but on board we had broken rice. So I'd cook the broken rice and mix that into the boudin. All right, but for something like this, you always want a long grain rice, and you don't want a flavored rice because you want your rice cooking those flavors. Does that makes yes. Crawfish. Crawfish. Crawfish are the same texture as shrimp, except a little sweeter. Meat's in the tail. There's nothing up in the head. Do they need to really be cooked? I mean, I can only get them frozen. I live in Arizona. In the one pound packs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Imagine me trying to get the meat off of your cheek <laughs> while you alive. <laughs> It'll hurt a little bit. It, you, you might put up a little fight. So what they do is they blanch the crawfish, and then they pick the tail meat. So when you see all of that tail meat in those one pound packs, that's picked by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have some machines that now are starting to do it, but mostly it's picked by hand. But because they're blanched, they're already cooked. And if you notice, they're kind of orangey. Don't rinse them. That's the fat. That's the fat. But just like the shrimp, once we shut this off and give it a stir, we can take those crawfish tails and just put them right in. Right on top. Right on top. Or if you want to fold them in a little bit, you can. And just while the rice is cooking, they'll reheat. Thank you, bro. Oh, you're welcome. Yes? Would it be blasphemous at all to uh, throw in a cup of wine, red wine, at the end of the boil? At the end of this? Yeah. Here's what's going to happen. If you... If, if you put in wine at the end, you're not going to get a chance to cook that alcohol flavor out. And it's going to give a, a bad flavor. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, well, what about like the last 10 minutes? Before? The last 10 minutes? Yeah. You're going to lose the flavor. I th you'd be wasting wine. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. A, a, a buddy of mine was, a, was the agent in charge of the, uh, of the DEA office in New Orleans. And for his team... He decided to have like a chili cook-off, all right? And he asked me, he says, hey, I want you to come over and judge this chili cook-off. And I'm like, okay. So, I, and I, I'm tasting them all. And then there was this one, it looked so good, so good. And I didn't know whose was who. And I tasted it, and it's like, all I got was a mouthful of alcohol, and it looked so good. And so then, of course, they asked me, they said, okay, you gotta tell us the truth in drag bar. So, I got to that one and I said, this is how to show you how looks can be deceiving. Look how good this looks. Look how it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The texture is perfect. It tastes like crap. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? It was my buddies. <laughs> he said he had put it on that morning, the day before, let it go all day, and 
he had his wife watch it. He let it go all day. He says, I got my stupid behind home, looked at it like, oh, it's good. And I decided, I'm going to throw a little beer in it. And he put a little beer in it, shut it off to cool it down. And so it cooled down and brought it in the next day and just plugged it in and heated it back up. And that alcohol hadn't had a chance to cook off. So do I cook with wine? Am I going to taste it in the flavor that's coming out of what I'm cooking? Does that kind of make sense? And does it have, is it going to cook long enough to get rid of that alcohol taste so I don't have that back flavor? All right. Yes. Yes, dear. Can we talk oil? Can we talk oil? Today we hear so much bad stuff about vegetable oils. And what do you have at home? Cooking shows that you watch, they're all canola oil. Could you, they actually name canola oil. What oils do you use, and do you use canola oil, and I hope you don't? Normally at home I have olive or vegetable. And nine times out of ten I use a little vegetable. But I am Louisiana, I do have bacon fat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have lard, you know. A lot, you know, lard is in the regular shelf with all the other oil. What do you have at home? Uh, avocado oil, olive oil. Look, look, wait, look at you talking all cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have avocado oil. <laughs> no, no. Let's talk cricket. <laughs> Let's talk cricket. Yes. Um, no, no. Usually with oil, remember the oil is mostly you're putting in. For a little, a little, just to give you some, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, lubrication. That's it. That's it. We need that lubrication when we strip our own doing. Uh, I should have played with a helmet. Uh, no, it's just for a little lubrication. So, like, you want to save your good, like, olive oil or avocado oil for like 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 for salad dressings or like once I cook my pasta and if I'm cooking it ahead of time and I want to rinse it with cold water to stop it from cooking once it drains really good then I take my good olive oil and toss it with that so that's how you depend on what oil you use what what is the job is it doing is it really gonna add am I gonna taste it or do I just need some lubrication does that kind of make sense yeah, everybody's looking for the ladies. Right? Then, you know, that's the thing about chefs. Chefs have egos. You know, let me show you what I can cook that you can't. You know, it, it, yeah, I'm sorry. It just frustrates me that all the cooking shows you watch on TV, they all use, they all specifically say canola oil. Yeah, because that's the latest fan, and that's probably their sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but vegetable oil works great. Just use a little vegetable oil, all right? Yes. And they're always complaining, oh, I, I wouldn't cook with a canned tomato. It all tastes like metal. I wouldn't use frozen vegetables. What the hell's wrong? Look, here's the thing. If you can't get fresh, go for frozen. The freezing process has totally changed. The way things are frozen now, it's, it's instantaneous freezing. So the last thing I would do would go to can. But, even, but tomatoes are going to be in a can. I mean, because they can them fresh. But if you're cooking out of a can, saute a little fresh onion, saute a little fresh bell pepper or something, or some celery, and then go ahead and put that can in, because now you've freshened it up, okay? I keep, y'all remember about six months ago, all of a sudden, had a tomato scare? My wife laughed at me because I bought so many cans of fire roasted tomatoes and I tried to hide them underneath the kitchen table. I had cases stacked up and finally one day she bent down, she dropped something and she's like, what the hell? <laughs> I said, there's a tomato shortage, they said. And, and I'm still working on that can. Yes, dear. Here on the board? That was this. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, they use the uh, seasoning and they, they rim the glass with the for the bloody merriment. For the 
Yeah, that's it. That's the, the seasoning blend. All right. Oh, oh, look. Uh, there, there we go. We have one. All right. Uh, yes. The crawfish fat, cook with it. Fat is flavorful. Look at me. I'm full of flavor, boy. I tell you what. Cannibals ever get a hold of me, they're good for the year. They'll reduce me down. But yeah, uh, like that's why I was talking about the packet of crawfish tails. Don't rinse them off. Don't rinse them off. But I, I, I appreciate you all coming to hang out this morning. I appreciate you all liking the food. Uh, Tom and Anastasia are somewhere around here. You see them, you got to thank them because they do all the work. And when you see the crew around, let me tell you what, I have worked with a lot of places and a lot of different folks. And by far, if I would ever have to work on another trip, I'm going to be in trouble because this crew here is fantastic. So thank you all for collecting what we do. All right? Thank you so much. And tomorrow we'll be doing some gumbo so you get to see a room. Yes.